In December 2017, the New York Times published three videos showing unidentified aerial phenomena. The videos had been recorded, allegedly, by US Navy pilots. Dude, this is a fucking drone, bro. There's a whole fleet of them, look on the ASA. My gosh. The article in the New York Times generated an enormous media interest and it actually ended up pushing the US government to act on the request of the public for more information. It all culminated in June 2021 with the release of an official report from the Pentagon about this subject. The report doesn't give any explanation for, well, basically lack of information, but it states that here we are dealing with actual objects and not with false readings. And now the entire world is involved in one of the largest debates in modern history. The question being, what if, if they are aliens? I believe there is a much more relevant question. What if, if they are not aliens? Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. And the technology that we are covering today is quite unusual. And to be honest, I'm not even sure that it is military. In this video, I'm not interested in discussing what these objects really are. Some believe that they are aliens, some believe that they are not. If you are interested in this side of the subject, well, Joe Scott made an excellent video also summarizing the positions of the debunking community. Some of the debunking is convincing, some is not, but that's entirely not the point of this video. In this video, we are accepting the conclusions of the Pentagon report and we are discussing what if these objects are of human origin. I may or may not have an idea, but I will tell you at the end of the video. What makes the Tic Tacs really strange is that we can't imagine an evolutionary path from where we are now to that type of technology. For example, we can relate to a Star Wars Imperial Destroyer because it has engines, uh, windows, some sort of uh, aerodynamic shape, uh, has cannons, so all things that could be the evolution of what we have now, albeit it is supposed to be science fiction, but also a very advanced technology. The fact that it's showing ship-like and aircraft-like characteristics is making the destroyer relatable. We understand what it is. With the Tic Tacs, we have no such connection. As others have already pointed out, these objects show no evident means of propulsion. There is no signs of mass being displaced, there are no aerodynamic surfaces, no hints of energy being transformed. However, they do produce work. They fly, obviously, no? And to produce work, you need to spend energy, and to spend energy, you need to transform the energy from one form to another. Since the efficiency of the conversion process is never 100% and with current human technology at least in propulsion is way less than 100%, there is always a waste product, which is heat. The Tic Tacs in the infrared do not appear to be particularly bright, nor they show any sign of a plume, so their temperature is probably not much different than the environmental temperature. So one thing that we may infer is the fact that whatever is the propulsion, its efficiency is very close to 100%. Another interesting element is the acceleration these objects are capable of. I did some back-of-the-envelope calculation, and in one case, an acceleration of at least 1200 Gs has been observed. Mind, it seems very high for a flying machine, 
but it, for example, it is one order of magnitude lower than the acceleration of a tank projectile. In any case, these accelerations don't seem to be compatible with the presence of a crew inside, well, at least if inertia is still a thing. We must also point out that when the pilots tried to close in and the objects reacted, the acceleration and the speed that they did demonstrated was definitely high, but much lower than the acceleration that they have shown to be capable of. There is also a claim that these objects do not produce sonic booms while flying, supersonic, but I didn't see any situation in which this could actually be verified. On the opposite side, there is at least one report of one of these objects hovering quite close to the water and seemingly stirring and making turbulent the water, which is probably the only hint of a propulsion system that we had so far. Another interesting technological aspect is the lack of stealth. They seem to be easily visible on radars, they are visible on uh, the infrared band and in obviously invisible light. They do not hide and in general they do not practice any evasive maneuver unless an aircraft gets too close. So the capabilities that may have military relevance are the acceleration, the speed and the capability of hovering. We know nothing about the eventual payload or range, but since they react to the approaching aircraft, they must have some kind of sensors. Well, to be honest, they seem to be drones or RPVs. The propulsion and performances are inexplicable, at least to me, but they don't seem to have a crew. As I said before, the acceleration is too high. Humans would not be capable of withstanding that kind of acceleration. And they are probably RPVs because since the first sighting goes back to 2004, at the time, the self-guidance, self-driving, let's say, technology was not as developed as it is today. However, if they are RPVs, the guidance signal should have been picked up, which may well have happened, and we are not being told. While considering that they buzz around the US Navy training areas, they seem to be interested in the Navy's activities. I would imagine that whoever is controlling those vehicles is pretty much sure that the Navy is not going to react violently because otherwise they would use probably some evasive tactics. I find also quite interesting that they do not move at their maximum speed but a speed that is not much different than the aircraft when they are actually reacting to the aircraft's closing in. We may be relatively sure that there is a state actor behind these vehicles, unless we want to consider some James Bond-like scenario where a supervillain has created a large organization that has studied advanced aerospace technologies that may have a military application. We may be tempted to think that Whoever is behind these objects is someone that has a large and advanced technology base. But it must not be necessarily so, since this type of propulsion is definitely a breakthrough, it's not an evolution of what already exists. Well, the, this breakthrough may have happened in many different places. Actually, building one of these may be even simpler than building a conventional jet or a conventional fighter. It might be simpler. It might be like an, an electric car in comparison to an internal combustion car. The electric car is much simpler, but it took almost a century to get there. 
So other than United States, Russia and China, there could be probably at least half a dozen of European countries on the list, plus two or three Asian countries, India, Australia, and I might want to add South Africa and Brazil. For now, the only military value that they seem to have is intelligence, and please don't get me wrong, it's quite an important value. However, we don't know the payload, we don't know the range, we don't know if we could install any sort of weapon on these systems, and we don't know if they could be using it. Basically, we don't know all the kind of features that would be necessary to know to understand if they are really of any other military value. The fact that they appear nearby US Navy training areas, well, if they are not based on the continental United States, they are probably delivered there by some underwater vessel, by a submarine, because, well, if it was a ship, probably the Navy would have realized that. They would have seen it. Or they simply may have intercontinental range and nobody saw them crossing the Pacific uh, to get close to the training area. Just do not assume that they are overall technologically revolutionary and technologically advanced. What they have demonstrated so far is just one breakthrough technology, which is propulsion. And even for that, we don't know the exact pros and cons and the eventual limitation of this new type of propulsion. At the end, they may end up changing the overall strategic equilibrium of the world, but just don't give this for granted because they look like UFOs. I wouldn't be surprised that the day this is made public, we realize that their only utility is actually gathering information, which is very important, but probably is not going to change the overall balance of power. Well, I really wish I knew. However, let's make a few considerations. So if it is China, it would make sense to spy the US Navy in their home waters, but you would expect these objects showing up elsewhere in the Western Pacific, for example, or in the Indian Ocean. Always consider that the first video goes back to 2004, so they have been around for 17 years now there should have been some other sightings around the world. If it is Russia, the same applies as China, but we should have seen them in the Baltic, in the North Atlantic, in the Black Sea, and so on. Many seem to believe it is the USA with a black program that is extremely advanced and unknown to the other branches of the uh, American administration, the American Armed Forces. In this case, all the situation could have been a sort of test, a covert test, with all the other military personnel unaware, just to see how an, ar an armed force is going to react if they suddenly appear. But the same consideration applies. Since they were available from 2004, we should have seen them elsewhere in the world by now. And if they actually are reconnaissance assets, I'm pretty sure that Russians and Chinese would have been clear to and would have been open with the rest of the world telling everyone that they could see them or that they saw them and they're not theirs. Something like this should have happened, but we have no news. Actually, what we know is that the Chinese and the Russians are interested as well in those objects and there are unconfirmed news that they have similar programs to study them. If they come from a European or Asian country allied with the United States, well, the only possibility that I see is that it was actually a test, a covert test to see how the US Navy was capable of identifying these, uh, these objects, but it was a test that was agreed with the United States. The only ones that could do by themselves could be France and potentially Israel. But I don't see them actually ruffling the American feathers if it wasn't a matter of life and death. 
Australia, same thing. India, good candidate. They have a rather autonomous policy. They would have probably chosen a um, more approachable navy if they wanted to make an experiment. But there's a vague possibility, more than the other minor countries that I've mentioned so far. South Africa and Brazil, while well, considering their economies, they would probably be much more interested in selling the royalties for this new technology rather than poking the US Navy just to, just to test if they work. So, wrapping everything up, we have very few elements to make an informed guess of what they actually are, but the key things seem to be the propulsion. That seems to be a breakthrough. Also, we do not have information about their actual military value. They seem to be information gathering platforms, but again, we don't know. Since the first sightings were to, in 2004, we should have seen them around the world somewhere else, but we didn't. I wish I had more to share, but I don't. However, I may have an idea. In my opinion, they are coming from 